The next two basic functions we're going to look at are functions that you may have seen near the end of a second year algebra course. Um, maybe not. Sometimes we get to it, sometimes we don't. Um, we're just going to introduce them so that we can kind of see them and come to recognize them. Uh, we'll, we'll study them in great depth, of course, in the next semester in trigonometry. But we're going to begin with the sine function as a trigonometric function. For the sine curve that we see here, domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Range is negative 1 to 1. Um, domain will always be that. The range will always be this unless there's what we call amplitude change. The, the wave, the curve could stretch, it could grow a little bit. Um, but for the basic sine function, this is its range, including the negative 1 and 1 uh, as endpoints on that range. Uh, it is a continuous function. It is also an odd function. Notice there is symmetry about the origin. Points in the first quadrant reflect down here into the third quadrant, and likewise second to fourth, etc. So it is an odd function, as it's drawn here with no uh, translations at all. Uh, it doesn't have any asymptotes. It will have, we'll write it like this, it does have minimum and maximum values. Okay, it's got both high points, low points, and a bunch of them. Okay, an infinite number of minimum and maximum points. Um, and I'll add one other bit about it as it will differentiate it somewhat from the, the next function we'll look at. It contains the point zero, zero, generally. Okay, goes through the origin right there. Um, that's one way to tell it apart from the function we'll look at next. Uh, yeah, unless, you know, in b basic simple terms, unless there's horizontal shifting or translation of the graph. In general terms, if you see uh, one of these wave graphs that goes through the origin, it is most likely a sine function. Next function we want to look at is the cosine function and its graph. Domain and range for it are the same as what they were for the sine function. Okay, so no different there. Negative infinity to positive infinity and negative one to one. Okay, a lot of the same characteristics here to be quite honest. Uh, it is a continuous function. Now, a little bit different it's not an odd function like sine was. It's an even function. It has symmetry about the y-axis. If you were to fold the graph over itself on the y-axis, the points would match up. Uh, just like the sine graph, it has minimum and maximum points. And again, it has infinitely many min and maxes. And it does, just to kind of distinguish it, it contains the point zero, 0,1. Or we could say it doesn't contain the origin, okay? Of course, this is just in a general sense. If it slides left and right, then that could not be an accurate statement. Um, if it's got some stretching going on, it may contain another point here on the y-axis. Um, but in general, it doesn't go through the origin. Maybe you could say most of the time you don't see it going through the origin. The next function is one we're probably very familiar with. It's one that you um, see probably in a first year algebra class, very early on in fact actually, uh, is the absolute value function. It's characterized by its V shape. Okay, it's got a nice V shape to it. Um, its domain and range it 
its domain is negative infinity to positive infinity and it will always be that. Its range in this case is zero to infinity. It starts at zero on the y and it goes up to infinity from there. Uh, it is a continuous function Okay, it will always be a continuous function. Uh, it is also an even function. Okay, this has symmetry about uh, the y-axis, this basic one does. Uh, it does have, um, I'll just write it like this, either a min or max value cannot have both um, but in this particular case the, what we're looking at in the picture does have a minimum value point at the bottom um, no asymptotes nothing like that with this particular function the next function is no doubt a very peculiar looking function it's very easily recognizable by its uh, appearance. It's called the greatest integer function. It is sometimes called a step function. Um, for obvious reasons, it looks like a staircase, like a, a bunch of steps. Okay. Um, the function might look like this, int x. int stands for the integer, is an abbreviation there. Um, sometimes you see it notated like this. Some text use notation like this. Um, kind of square brackets, um, but it's got that double vertical line on each side. So I just want to share that with you as well. Uh, it's domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Uh, even though there are lots of breaks in continuity here in the graph, it does contain every x value, okay, as it stair steps both directions on out forever. Uh, its range is somewhat unique. Uh, I'm not going to write it as uh, in these interval notation. It's the only one I'm not going to write it like that. Uh, I would say its range, I would describe it this way. All integers. Okay. Um, notice there are no points. It's just a bunch of horizontal lines at negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, etc. Those are integers. Okay. It doesn't contain any decimals uh, in between. Uh, it is most certainly not continuous. Uh, it is not even or odd. Uh, we probably wouldn't describe it as having minimum or maximum values. doesn't have any asymptotes. Um, but this is pretty much it uh, about it. Again, very easily recognizable one of the, the 12 basic functions. The last of our 12 basic functions is called the logistic function or sometimes called the logistic growth function. Um, it is one that we uh, begin to touch on a little bit maybe at the end of uh, Algebra 2, a second year Algebra course. It's one we'll talk about in a, a little more depth this year uh, in a couple chapters um, when we talk about exponential and logarithmic functions. Um, but as a basic function, kind of here it is, its shape, uh, some information about it, its domain and range. Domain is negative infinity to infinity and its range 0 to 1 not inclusive on those endpoints okay uh, just by appearances we can tell that it is a continuous function uh, it doesn't have any symmetry so it's not even uh, it's not odd it does have asymptotes In fact, it has two horizontal asymptotes. 
at y equals zero and y equals one has an asymptote on the left side at zero and asymptote on the right side at one. Okay. Um, I wouldn't characterize it as having minimum or maximum values. Um, so this is, is, is kind of it.